Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. This is part three in the video series on making our own boring bar. Before we dive in, wanted to give you a quick update on my video recording equipment. To date, I've been using a DSLR, which I love, but I've been experimenting with a camcorder just to see what the benefits are. Mostly right now, I like the fact that I've got a monitor screen so I can watch my hands. The other thing I've done just to try to get the best audio quality is using a lavalier mic. Uh, I've got a little audio technical one that I'm wearing right now. It's great, but it's wired, and I don't like the wires in the shop, especially around the new lathe. Uh, just absolutely a, an unnecessary safety risk. So I talked to the folks at B and H. Uh, they are very educated. They're great to deal with, and they recommended a this Rode mic you see right here. It was it's a, apparently a very popular mic. It's directional. Comes with this little uh, suspension mount you can see here. So. I picked it up, it was about 150 bucks, and uh, I know, uh, I don't know a lot about microphones in this world, but I do know that Rode has a pretty good brand name and did a little research and it seemed to be a good choice. Now what's interesting is that because it's a directional mic, normally you would mount it on the hot shoe of your DSLR camcorder and have it pointed towards your subject that you're videotaping. A lot of the times I'm standing behind the camera, but also the hot shoe that it comes with, which is standard, is too small for this little Sony, um, you know, consumer camcorder here um, that's got a smaller hot shoe. So I don't have a way to mount it yet. So happens to have a 3 8 by 16 ID thread there. So I just put a hole in a bolt, put a zip tie around. So now I've got it on my little tripod and I can loosen the bolt and adjust the angle. Should be actually good because uh, what we're going to do right here is uh, start the episode and I'm going to show you filing this part so while I'm talking I'll have it pointed back but I, we want to try to pick up the sound of the file working so maybe I'll point the mic toward the file and see how that works. Anyways just want to give you guys a quick update and we'll jump back into the episode here. So here's our boring bar from part two. two. What we want to do now is heat treat it. I've been doing some experimenting and I'm happy with my results you know, which you're about to receive uh, using vegetable oil in my oxyacetylene tank. Here's a little piece of O1. And what I wanted to do here is zoom in and show you as I file this piece versus filing a piece that's in its uh, annealed state. I've got the mic pointed away from me toward the file, so I may not have great audio quality on my talking here, but I wanted to see if you could pick up the sound of the file. Actually, we'll start with the annealed piece here. As you can see right now, I've got a crisp edge. What we'll do now, take a file. This, by the way, is a, uh, a flat bastard file. Normally I use a larger one, but I've actually left that um, off-site, so I'm using this one tonight. Um, and so what you can see is you, a small chamfer right on the end of that part from filing, and you can hear the file biting into the material. Now we'll take this piece of O1 that I heat treated and tempered. And if you listen, you can hear the files just skipping right over it. And you'll see no ability to file any sort of a mark in the material. Same thing. Shines it up a little bit, but you're not actually filing a chip off. So bottom line is um, all I'm trying to show here is that I uh, have been experimenting with this for a few days and am happy with the quality of the hardness. So what we're going to do now is go heat treat this part and then we're going to temper it in a toaster oven at 350 for an hour and that should give us a hard enough end to go ahead and grind it and hopefully have a decently functional tool. One of the questions that I have outstanding that is what, um, what I need to harden. And from the folks that have commented on part two of, the, of this little series, it seems to be that making it harder won't make it more stiff, if I'm using the correct property material there, meaning I don't need to heat treat and harden the whole tool. 
I'm only going to heat treat and harden out here, or really, I guess it's the cutting tip that matters the most. And this will be the only cutting tip in the front here. But I'm going to leave this on, on the back side for now so that we can maybe use it to practice grinding if we need to. Otherwise, we'll get rid of it so that we can get our boring bar into uh, the smallest hole that is practical to for use. Before we heat treat, I've got my toaster turned on and preheated to 350, and I've got the little rack sitting in front of it. Just after we quench the part in the vegetable oil, we will bring it right over, lay it on the tray, and stick the tray in the toaster oven for an hour. But it's important, uh, as I understand it, to you want to have that uh, toaster oven or, or whatever you're using to do your temper ready to go. So here's our setup. Uh, the I wanted to buy peanut oil, but I couldn't find it. Uh, or what I did find was a small container for quite a, quite a high price. This was, um, but I, I did a quick search, and it looks like vegetable oil should work. This is when I was at the store, and sure enough, it seems to work fine. This was only about nine bucks, so that's to fit the bill. I've got a piece of 16 gauge just as a layer of protection down here. I've got the part just inside of a strap clamp block keep it upright. I can rotate it if I need to while I'm heat treating it. Shouldn't fall over. We'll get it up to critical. We we'll use the pliers, dunk it, swish it around vigorously. You want to have, as I understand it, enough oil in your container to handle the amount of heat you're going to dissipate. I don't know what the formula is, but this is plenty. I can tell you from the experimenting I've done. And then we will move it over to our oven and temper it. Okay, let's uh, head on in here. The part won't roll because of the flat. Okay. Perfect. I will let that uh, cook cook for an hour and we'll see how we did. Took the part out of the toaster. It's been tempered and just ran it real quick over a wire wheel to knock some of the scale off. So now let's go ahead and grind it. Try to get a nice radius on there and then we're going to try and take a cut. I am no uh, Picasso here when it comes to grinding, so what we're going to do, the part will be held in the lay like so, so this would be our cutting edge. So I'm going to use this backside here to experiment with, just to give me, to give me a, a little bit of practice here, to try and get the best radius we can get on our geometry.
I'm just dunking it in water here. Keep it cool. Okay. So I've ground. I've ground some relief that we want in the front that you can see. Now let's try and uh, angle a radius. Okay, it's not terrible. Uh, I wouldn't say it's, uh, I wouldn't say I'm ecstatic about it, but this is just the practice one. The thing you've got to remember is you've got to cut the, uh, the thing I've got to keep in mind is I've got to cut the relief underneath it, and you don't just cut that as a straight line. What I'm trying to do is come up, as you saw on the various angles, kind of work the tool around. Because you don't just, sorry, what I'm trying to say is you don't just form a radius at the very top. You almost form a radius along the whole uh, side of the tool there. I'm also uh, using the side of the wheel, which is, you know, I don't think you're supposed to do a ton of, but it'll, I'm not too worried about it. You know, that actually doesn't look too bad, to be honest with you. Um, and I'm, I'm happy with the relief underneath it. The, um, as you can sort of see, it's probably hard to ca capture it. Um, but I'm actually happy with that. Now the thing is, I can also do some final rounding with a uh, stone. So it doesn't have to be perfect off the grinding wheel. So. While we're here, now let's go ahead and remember we can, um, well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to, um, we're going to put this in the lathe and we're going to run it, uh, we're going to run the lathe backwards and we're going to just go ahead and see how this end does before we go and cut our, the side we actually want to use going forward. We've got a piece of 6061 chucked up, got my boring bar in the tool holder. I've got it a few thou above center. I took a couple of test cuts before I started recording just to make sure it wasn't uh, a di complete disaster. So far it looks really good. I was only taking some skim cuts though here. Um, I'm running the lathe backward so the chuck is turning uh, clockwise and that means I actually don't have power feed or rather my power feed would be left to right which is, which is no good for what we're trying to do. So I'll hand feed it here and I'm going to zoom in a little more so you can see hopefully the chip form.
So very happy with that. Now this is only aluminum. The problems I was having earlier in the jacket drawing series was uh, 1144 steel, uh, which isn't too hard to cut, but it's certainly harder than aluminum. But nevertheless, I have to say, I'm really happy with that. And again, for me, uh, remember, I'm going from a piece of raw 01 to a cutting tool that does this. That's pretty cool to me. I'm really excited with that. I'm gonna take this out. We'll take a closer look at it on the bench, and then let's go ahead and grind the other side. Taking a closer look at this, I actually uh, am really pleased with that. It's nicer than I thought. You can even see the mirror finish of my finger. So I have to say that's pretty cool. Uh, I cannot complain about that at all. So let's go ahead now and grind up the other side. In theory, we can do even better because using the power feed makes all the difference in the world by giving a constant chip load when you're feeding it in versus the jerkiness uh, of a hand feed. So again, just to take a look at the tip that we've got. So there we've got the, uh, and we've actually got a tiny burr. That's okay. We're going to focus now though on grinding the front side and see how that goes. And if we like it, I think what we'll end up doing is grinding the back side and the bottom off again to reduce the diameter of the tool bit to stick it into smaller holes. Um, but anyways, let's worry about getting that uh, front piece ground now. The only thing I'm going to do different, I want to try to leave as much real estate as I can to either correct uh, a grind, if I don't like the grind, to correct it, or hopefully more importantly, just to leave the most future tool life uh, for this boring bar. So let's give it a shot. Grind some of our relief here first. And keep the bit cool. Okay, it's enough. That's enough relief. So now let's carefully start and grind. So that's, you'll notice what I was doing is instead of, and I'm learning as I go here, instead of trying to rotate a radius like so, all I'm doing here is, uh, is rolling up along the various different angles and you end up with that hemispherical shape that I think is exactly what we're going for. Uh, I've got a slightly bit of a blunt tip there, but I really don't want to go too much. Okay, let's leave it at that. It might be too large a radius, but we can always take more off. Um, but I'm pretty happy, I think, at least I'm pretty happy with that for now. So I've got a um, stone here 
what I'm going to do is just push it along the stone. Someone's probably going to tell me that this is a terrible idea what I'm doing here, but I'm trying to just shape that last little bit. Okay, you can actually see the high spots it's taking down. Um, I, I didn't want to go too far off track in this uh, series. I thought about surface grinding this top, thought it would be fun, but honestly not really that helpful um, to the goal we're trying, the goal at hand. Um, so I figured we'll save, uh, we've got a few other things lined up for the surface grinder. That looks great though. It's kind of addicting to do this as you start to see uh, start to see that uh, steel shine through. It looks great. Uh, but anyways, let's uh, let's hop back over on the lathe, stick our part back in there, and see what kind of cut we get. Okay, here we go. I. Uh, faced off the end of the part just so it's got a clean edge. It's the opposite side of the same tube, so I have not bored in this side, and I haven't taken any test cuts. We're just gonna go for this sort of live on camera. We are gonna use power feed. Let's see how she does. Okay, touch off, I'll take five thou. Per side. Okay. Looks good, uh, let's take it out of the chuck here and we'll head back in the shop and take a closer look on the bench. I am really pleased with that. That is an awesome finish. You can see the mirrored reflection. It's really smooth. Just awesome. You can see it formed a nice chip. It's a, um, it can be a problem actually being this stringy of a chip but it's a consistent chip, which is good. Um, the cutting edge looks good post-cut. And hey, most importantly, again, the idea here was, can we get a nice surface finish? So look, doesn't make me a tool making expert, a tool grinding expert by any means, but look, this is how you, this is how you do stuff. This is how you learn, this is how you get better. Certainly a confidence booster for me. I think it's just pretty darn cool. We took a piece of 01 that costs a few bucks and we turned it into a tool. If I can do it, you can do it. You, you, gotta, you gotta do some, some lathe work. You don't necessarily even need a mill. And you gotta get uh, a torch to heat it up and dunk it in some oil, and away you go. Really cool. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I will use this tool on some tool steel in a future episode, I'm sure, on my jacket making dies, which I've got more to come on. So don't think I'm doing a cop out here by just cutting aluminum today. But um, yeah, again, if you've liked this video, please do me a favor, like it or comment. Uh, as always, there's good, good info on our Facebook page. Otherwise, folks, that's all for now. Take care, and I'll see you soon.